millennia after the derelict human ship fell into dark hibernation, unaware of passing centuries, the eerie silence of its dreamless slumber was shattered by the tractor beam of an alien vessel, its ancient hull groaning in metallic protest as it was dragged from the cold depths of space into the sterile light of a Suliban hangar bay, where it disgorged its frozen human cargo into the hands of their shocked alien discoverers. It was the Earth year 870,000 A.D. The Suliban's Galactic Federation had explored the cosmos for eons, their advanced technology allowing them to unravel its greatest mysteries. But today, their routine survey mission revealed an enigma beyond any they had encountered before, an impossibly ancient human ship, drifting like a ghost at the edge of known space, its archaic cryopods still humming with life. The humans should have been less than dust after so many millennia, their civilization lost to the uncaring march of deep time. Yet here they slumbered, primitives from a planet that was now little more than a distant myth. Sirefather, commander of the Suliban expedition, could hardly contain his excitement as he ordered the human vessel brought to their capital for study. Within this crumbling relic lay the secrets of a lost age and the key to advancing Suliban science by generations. They would pry apart the ancient cryotech, even if it meant dissecting the very humans it had preserved. The human crew, led by acting Captain Kevin Brown, clawed their way back to consciousness screaming. Hysteria swept through their ranks as they realized their situation, adrift in an incomprehensible future, at the mercy of alien captors, with no way home and no one left to remember them. As Kevin fought to hold his crewmates together, he learned a chilling truth. No one, not even the vast Galactic Federation, knew the ultimate fate of Earth. Tensions rose as the humans tried to navigate this strange frontier. The Suliban saw them as little more than a resource ripe for exploitation, a treasure trove of ancient knowledge to be stripped of its secrets. Kevin and his crew soon realized the horrible reality. They were prisoners of the Federation, relics to be studied and discarded. Even as they struggled to decipher this alien society and plot their escape, a great political war raged around them. For the first time in eons, the Suliban were divided. Some looked upon these lost primitives and saw only a threat to their stability, arguing for the humans' destruction or eternal internment. Others dreamed of harnessing this ancient knowledge to unlock new cosmic frontiers and argued fervently to preserve them. But all sides agreed. The humans could not be allowed to leave. Not now. Not ever. Time was running out. Even now, Kevin's ship was being repaired, refueled, and prepared for dismantling. The humans' ultimate fate decided without their consent in alien halls of power. If the humans did not act soon, they would become permanent guests of the Federation. Live experiments to be autopsied and cataloged, until the last human breath was wrung from ancient lungs. But Kevin aimed to make the Federation regret its arrogance. As the Suliban deliberated, he gathered every scrap of intelligence he could, plotting a desperate flight into the unknown. He would steal back his ship from under the aliens' upturned noses and lead his crew to freedom. Or oblivion. Yet even as the humans mount their daring escape, Sirefather draws his net around them, eager to drag the primitives back into captivity. The rusted steel of an ancient human ship groans against the advanced alien metals of its pursuers, the gulf of lost millennia yawning between them, and the humans begin to realize the true struggle ahead. They are the last embers of mankind, all that remains of a once mighty civilization now lost beyond recall and fading from all memory. They are exiles in an incomprehensible future, hunted by forces they cannot begin to understand. The wonders and horrors of a transformed galaxy stretch out before them in all directions, and one question hangs heavy on all their minds. Are they the future of humanity or its epitaph? Can the inheritors of a dead world, armed only with grit and determination, forge a new path for their species in a cosmos that has long since abandoned them? Or will they fall here, the last remnants of humanity snuffed out by an uncaring alien empire, ashes scattered to the cosmic winds? 
The ancient human ship shuddered and groaned as it tore through the void, a battered relic straining against the unrelenting pursuit of the Suliban. In the cramped confines of the bridge, acting Captain Kevin Brown hunched over the flickering console, his eyes scanning the alien text scrolling across the screen. I think I've got something, he called out, his voice hoarse with exhaustion. His crew, haggard and tense, gathered around him, their faces illuminated by the sickly glow of the displays. Kevin jabbed a finger at the screen. There, buried in the ship's original programming, a message from the old captain. He tapped a series of commands, and the text shifted, resolving into a star map. A single point pulsed, a bright beacon amidst the darkness. Coordinates, whispered Sarah, the ship's engineer. But to where? Kevin leaned in, his brow furrowed as he deciphered the cryptic words alongside the map. A colony, a secret outpost, established by our ancestors centuries ago. A ripple of excitement and disbelief passed through the crew. The thought of other humans, of a safe haven in this hostile galaxy, seemed almost too good to be true. We have to go there, Kevin declared, his voice firm with newfound grit. It's our only chance. He inputted the coordinates, and the ship's engines rumbled to life, charting a new course into the treacherous expanse of uncharted space. Light years away, aboard the sleek Suliban warship, Sirefather paced the polished deck, his eyes narrowed as he studied the holographic displays. His subordinate, Zarek, stood at attention, his angular features impassive. The humans grow more troublesome by the moment, Sirefather growled. If they find others of their kind, it could undo centuries of Suliban dominance. Zarek nodded, his voice smooth and cold. We cannot allow that to happen, Sirefather. The primitives must be contained. Sire Father turned to face him, his gaze sharp. You will find them, Zarek. Hunt them down. Use every resource at our disposal. Understood, Sire Father. Zarek bowed his head. They will not escape us. As the Suliban forces mobilized, their advanced tracking systems locking onto the fleeing human ship, Kevin and his crew found themselves plunging into a nightmare realm of cosmic anomalies and hostile aliens. Strange energies buffeted their vessel, alarms blaring as they navigated the twisted currents of warped space. And then, without warning, they were set upon by raiders. A jagged, patchwork ship, dripping with crude weapons, materialized from the void, slamming into the human vessel with a shuddering impact. In a crackle of static, a harsh, guttural voice filled the comm channels. Surrender your ship and your lives, puny humans, it snarled. You face Grathok, scourge of the seven systems. Kevin gripped the edge of the console, his fist clenched. They couldn't fight, not against the Marauders and the Suliban. But perhaps, he thought with a flash of desperate inspiration, they could bargain. Grathok, he called out, his voice steady. I have an offer for you. Safe passage for my crew, in exchange for Suliban secrets. Technology beyond your wildest dreams. There was a long, tense pause, then a bark of harsh laughter. Bold words, human. You have a deal. As the pirate ships fell into formation around them, a tenuous alliance born of desperation and greed, Kevin allowed himself a flicker of hope. But it was short-lived. No sooner had they set off, the mismatched convoy lumbering through the void, than a sleek Suliban fighter dropped out of warp, weapons blazing. Zarek's face filled the view screen his lips curled in a cold smile. Did you really think you could escape us, primitives? The pirates scattered, their ships peeling away as the Suliban onslaught tore into them. Plasma blasts ripped across the hull of the human vessel, alarms screaming as fires erupted in a dozen compartments. In the chaos, Kevin saw his crewmates fall, some torn apart by shrapnel, others burned by searing energy. He dragged the wounded to safety, shouting orders over the din of battle, desperately trying to hold his ship and his people together. But even as they fought, even as they bled, the cruel reality of their situation closed in around them. They were lost, hunted, hurtling through an uncaring cosmos towards a destination that might be little more than a myth. And yet, as Kevin looked into the eyes of his battered, defiant crew, 
he saw a flicker of something unbreakable. The last ember of humanity, refusing to be extinguished. They would fight on, even if oblivion waited at the end of their journey. For they were the last of their kind, the inheritors of Earth's shattered legacy, and they would not go quietly into the void. The battered human ship limped through space, its hull scarred and smoking from the vicious Suliban attack. Kevin slumped in the captain's chair, his face streaked with grime and blood. The bridge crew worked in grim silence, nursing wounds and monitoring failing systems. We're approaching the coordinates, Sarah called out, her voice hoarse from smoke inhalation. Kevin leaned forward, hope warring with dread in his chest. On screen. The view screen flickered to life, revealing a desolate, rust-colored world. No cities gleamed on its surface. No ships darted through its atmosphere. It was a dead planet. No, Kevin whispered, his heart sinking. There has to be something. Scan for any signs of human activity. For hours they searched. The crew's spirits plummeted with each barren sweep of the sensors, just as despair threatened to overwhelm them. A faint energy signature caught their attention. They landed near a rocky outcropping, the ship groaning as it settled on the lifeless soil. Kevin led a small team to investigate, their breath ragged in the thin atmosphere. There! shouted Miller, pointing to a barely visible seam in the rock face. They activated the ancient mechanism, revealing a hidden entrance. The team descended into darkness, their helmet lights illuminating a vast underground complex. Dust-covered consoles lined the walls, bearing unmistakably human designs. We found it, Kevin breathed, running his hand over a faded earth insignia. As they explored further, they discovered labs filled with advanced technology beyond anything they'd seen before. But the excitement turned to horror when they reached the central chamber. A holographic message flickered to life showing a haggard man in a tattered uniform. This is Colonel Marcus Hayes, commander of New Eden Colony. If you're seeing this, then our worst fears have come true. The message detailed the colony's fall, a bioengineered virus that turned the settlers into ravening monsters. Kevin's blood ran cold as he realized the truth. This was no accident, but a deliberate attempt to wipe out humanity. We've created a cure. Hayes continued, his eyes wild with desperation. But it's too late for us. We've scattered the components across the galaxy. Find them. Save our people. The message cut out, leaving the team in stunned silence. Kevin's mind raced, piecing together the implications. Before he could fully process it all, alarms blared throughout the facility. Suliban ships entering orbit, Sarah's voice crackled over the comm. They've found us. Download everything you can, Kevin ordered, his crew scrambling to salvage what data they could from the ancient systems. They sprinted back to their ship, the ground shaking as Suliban weapons rained down from orbit. Kevin took one last look at the doomed colony as their battered vessel clawed its way into space. On the bridge of his flagship, Sirefather watched with cold fury as the human ship slipped away. Obliterate that facility, he snarled. Leave no trace. As New Eden vanished in nuclear fire behind them, Kevin clutched the data core containing the colony's secrets. They had survived, but at a terrible cost. Now they were truly alone, hunted across the stars, with the fate of humanity resting in their hands. Where to now, Captain? Sarah asked, her voice filled with equal parts fear and dedication. Kevin stared at the star chart, pupils dilating from all they had learned. We find those cure components, he said grimly, and we make the Suliban pay for what they've done. As they plotted a course into the unknown, Kevin couldn't shake the feeling that they were diving headfirst into something far darker and more complex than they could imagine. But they had no choice. They were humanity's last hope, and they would not go down without a fight. Kevin's hands shook as he guided the battered ship through a field of debris, Remnants of the Suliban bombardment still drifting in space. The bridge crew worked in tense silence, monitoring systems pushed to their limits. Captain, I'm picking up a signal, Sarah called out, her voice cutting through the quiet. It's faint, but definitely not Suliban. Kevin leaned forward, 
hope and wariness warring in his chest. Source? Uncharted planet, about half a light year from our current position. The crew exchanged uneasy glances. Miller spoke up, voicing their concerns. Sir, it could be a trap. We're in no shape for another fight. Kevin stared at the coordinates on the screen, weighing their options. The promise of answers, of finding more human technology or even clues about the cure, tugged at him. We have to risk it, he decided. Plot a course. Hours later, they touched down on a desolate, rocky world. Kevin led a small team out of the ship, weapons ready as they approached a hidden entrance tucked into a cliff face. The door slid open with a hiss, revealing a group of haggard-looking humans. One stepped forward, his weathered face a map of scars and wrinkles. I'm Marcus Conroy, he said, his voice gravelly with age. Welcome to what's left of humanity. Inside the outpost, Kevin marveled at the cobbled-together equipment and scavenged Suliban tech. Marcus explained their centuries-long struggle for survival, raiding Suliban outposts and living off scraps. But now you're here, Marcus said, a fierce light in his roomy eyes. We can finally get the cure. Kevin's heart raced. You know about the cure? Marcus nodded. We scattered the pieces across the stars. It was the only way to keep it safe from the Suliban after their bioweapon nearly wiped us out. As they discussed plans to retrieve the cure components, alarms blared throughout the outpost. A young colonist burst into the room. Suliban ships! They found us! Chaos erupted as Zarex hunters swarmed the base. Kevin shouted orders, organizing a desperate defense. Colonists fell under Suliban fire, their screams echoing through the corridors. We need to get you out of here, Kevin yelled to Marcus over the din of battle. Marcus shook his head, grabbing a weapon. My people will buy you time. Get to your ship. Kevin hesitated, then nodded grimly. He and his crew fought their way back to their vessel, dragging wounded colonists with them. As they lifted off, Suliban energy blasts pummeled the hull. We've got company, Sarah shouted as enemy fighters gave chase. Kevin's face hardened as he pushed the engines past their limits, weaving through a hail of weapons fire. They burst out of the atmosphere, leaving the doomed outpost behind. In the aftermath, Kevin stood on the bridge, surrounded by shell-shocked survivors. Marcus approached, his face etched with grief and perseverance. We need to move fast, the old man said. The first piece of the cure is on a frozen hell of a world. Suliban mining operations everywhere. Kevin nodded setting course for the ice planet. As they hurtled through space, he couldn't shake the image of the colonists they'd left behind. The weight of their sacrifice pressed down on him, along with the monumental task ahead. Doubt gnawed at him. Was this quest worth the cost in lives? Could humanity truly reclaim its place in the galaxy? He looked at Marcus, saw the unshakable grit in the old man's eyes, and felt his own drive solidify. They would find the cure. They would defeat the Suliban, no matter the odds. The ship plunged onward, carrying the last hope of humanity towards an uncertain future. The frozen world of Crack Seven loomed before them, a pale blue orb wreathed in swirling ice storms. Kevin's hands tightened on the controls as he guided their battered ship through the planet's turbulent atmosphere. Approaching the mining colony, Sarah reported, her voice tight with tension, activating smuggler ID transponders. The ship touched down on a grimy landing pad, ice immediately forming on its hull. Kevin turned to his crew, their faces grim with purpose. Remember, we're just another group of low-life smugglers. Keep your heads down and your mouths shut. They stepped out into the biting cold, the wind howling around them. The mining colony sprawled before them, a hodgepodge of prefab structures and improvised shanties. Suliban guards patrolled the perimeter, their eyes scanning for any sign of trouble. Kevin led his team through the crowded streets, dodging drunken miners and avoiding the suspicious glares of local thugs. The stench of unwashed bodies and cheap alcohol assaulted their nostrils as they made their way to a seedy cantina on the outskirts of town. Inside, the air was thick with smoke and the babble of a dozen alien languages. Kevin's eyes darted around the room, searching for their contact. 
a hulking figure sat alone in a shadowy booth, four arms crossed over a scarred chest. Grath? Kevin asked, sliding into the seat across from the alien pirate. The creature's eyes narrowed. Who's asking? We're looking for some specialized help, Kevin said, keeping his voice low. I hear you know your way around the mining facility. Grath leaned forward, interest sparking in his alien eyes. And what's in it for me? Kevin pulled out a small device, sliding it across the table. Human tech. More advanced than anything you've seen. There's plenty more where that came from. The pirate examined the device, a slow grin spreading across his face. You've got yourself a deal, human. But I warn you, the facility is crawling with Suliban forces and things far worse. As they finalized their plan, an urgent message crackled through Kevin's earpiece. Captain, we've got incoming. Multiple Suliban ships entering the system. Kevin cursed under his breath. We're out of time. We move now. They raced through the streets, Graath leading them to a hidden entrance to the mining tunnels. As they descended into the darkness, the ground shook with the impact of Suliban bombardment. The tunnels were a maze of twisting passages and abandoned equipment. Kevin's team moved swiftly, guided by Marcus's intel and Grath's expertise. They encountered the first of the mutated creatures in a vast cavern, its body warped and twisted by the virus. What the hell is that? Miller whispered, raising his weapon. The creature lunged, all razor claws and snapping jaws. Kevin's team opened fire, their shots echoing through the cavern. They fought their way deeper, battling waves of mutants and Suliban security forces. In a massive underground chamber, they faced an army of Suliban mechs, the air filled with plasma fire and the screech of tearing metal. Kevin watched in horror as rebels fell around him their bodies broken by the relentless assault. There! Marcus shouted, pointing to a heavily fortified door. The vault! They fought their way to the entrance, Kevin's fingers flying over the ancient human lock. The door slid open, revealing a small data core pulsing with energy. As Kevin grabbed the core, the cavern shook violently. Rocks rained down from the ceiling as Sirefather's forces bombarded the surface. We need to move! Grath roared. They sprinted for the exit, but a massive cave-in separated Kevin from Marcus and part of the team. Kevin hesitated, torn between the mission and his people. Go! Marcus shouted through the rubble. We'll find another way out. Heart racing, Kevin led the remaining survivors through a network of emergency tunnels. They emerged on the planet's surface, the sky ablaze with Suliban ships. Hours later, in the relative safety of Grath's hidden base, Kevin clutched the precious data core. His relief at their success was tempered by the loss of Marcus and the others. Sarah approached, her face grim. Captain, we've decrypted part of the data. The next piece of the cure is on an uncharted world in the Korvath Nebula. Kevin's blood ran cold as she continued. It's controlled by some kind of cult that worships the virus. And Sire Father has sent Zarek after us. Kevin stared at the star map, the deadly nebula looming before them. They had won a victory, but at a terrible cost, and their journey was not nearly finished. The Korvath Nebula loomed before them, a swirling mass of gas and cosmic debris. Kevin's hands trembled as he guided the ship through the treacherous expanse. Alarms blared as energy discharges crackled across the hull. Shields at 60%, Sarah called out, her fingers dancing across the controls. We're being pulled towards a massive gravity well. Through the view screen, a ringed planet materialized. Orakon, home of the Charith. As they entered the atmosphere, Kevin spotted the alien settlement sprawled across a desolate plain. Twisted spires reached towards the sky, pulsing with an eerie green light. A transmission crackled through the comm system. Outsiders, you trespass on sacred ground. State your purpose or be destroyed. Kevin swallowed hard. We seek enlightenment from the Charith. We wish to learn the ways of the virus. Silence stretched for agonizing seconds before the reply came. You may land. Prepare yourselves for ascension. The landing pad swarmed with robed figures as Kevin and Grayath disembarked. The alien's skin rippled and shifted, barely contained by their physical forms. 
A tall Charith approached, its face a writhing mass of tentacles. I am Vorloth, High Priest of the Blessed Mutation. You claim to seek our wisdom. Prove your devotion. Kevin's stomach churned as Vorloth produced a vial of sickly green liquid. Drink and let the virus show you truth. Exchanging a glance with Gryath, Kevin took the vial with shaking hands. He raised it to his lips, the acrid smell burning his nostrils. As the liquid slid down his throat, fire erupted in his veins. Kevin fell to his knees, vision blurring. The world twisted and warped around him. He vaguely registered Grath collapsing nearby, the alien's four arms spasming. Hours blended together as the Charith led them through bizarre rituals. Kevin's skin crawled, feeling as if insects burrowed beneath the surface. Yet his mind remained his own, clinging to sanity through sheer force of will. During a frenzied ceremony, Kevin overheard two acolytes discussing the sacred core hidden within the temple sanctum. His heart raced, the second piece of the cure. As the festivities reached a fever pitch, Kevin pulled Grath aside. We need to move now. Can you walk? The alien pirate nodded, his eyes glassy but alert. Lead the way, human. They slipped away from the gathering, weaving through shadowy corridors. Kevin's enhanced senses picked up the whir of security drones, guiding them past detection. The sanctum door loomed before them, sealed with an intricate locking mechanism. Kevin's fingers flew across the panel, muscle memory from countless infiltrations guiding his movements. With a soft hiss, the door slid open. There, on a pedestal bathed in sickly green light, sat the Suliban data core. As Kevin reached for the device, alarms blared throughout the complex. He snatched the core and turned to flee, only to find their exit blocked by a squad of Suliban shock troops. Did you really think you could escape us? Zarek's voice dripped with contempt as he stepped forward. You humans are a plague upon the galaxy. It's time we wiped you out for good. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as Kevin and Grayath dove for cover. They returned fire, the close quarters turning the sanctum into a kill box. You don't understand what you're dealing with, Kevin shouted over the din of battle. The virus isn't what you think it is. Zarek laughed, a cold and mirthless sound. Oh, I understand perfectly. The virus is the key to our ascension, and once we've eliminated you vermin, we'll... His words cut off as a stray shot shattered a containment vessel. Virus-laden mist enveloped Zarek, who staggered back, clawing at his face. Kevin watched in horror as Zarek's body contorted, flesh rippling and bones cracking as the mutation took hold. The Suliban commander's eyes blazed with madness as he unleashed a torrent of weapons fire, no longer distinguishing friend from foe. We need to go, now! Grath roared, yanking Kevin towards the exit. They sprinted through chaos-filled corridors, the sounds of battle echoing behind them. Charith cultists and Suliban troops alike fell to Zarek's onslaught. Kevin's lungs burned as they reached the landing pad, practically falling into their ship as Sarah fired up the engines. They rocketed into the sky, the settlement below erupting into flames. Days later, as the virus worked its way out of their systems, Kevin hunched over the newly acquired data core. The information within painted a grim picture. The final piece, he said, voice hoarse. It's in the Zayden Rift. Sarah's eyes widened. That's suicide. The Rift is a maze of spatial anomalies and gravitational shears. Kevin nodded, pulling up star charts on the main display. We don't have a choice. It's our only shot at the cure. As Kevin outlined his plan to navigate the treacherous region, a priority transmission cut through their comms. A grainy hologram flickered to life, revealing the scarred visage of Sire Father himself. I know you have the core segments, the Suliban leader growled. And I know where you're headed. Meet me in the rift, and I'll give you what you seek. Refuse, and I'll turn this galaxy to ash, trying to hunt you down. The transmission cut out, leaving the crew in stunned silence. Kevin's mind raced, weighing their options. Was it a trap? Almost certainly. But could they afford to ignore this chance? 
With a heavy sigh, Kevin set course for the Zidon Rift. One way or another, their journey was reaching its endgame. The Zidon Rift loomed before them, a swirling vortex of cosmic chaos that defied the laws of physics. Kevin's hands gripped the controls, his nuchals tightening with tension as he guided the ship into the maelstrom. Entering the rift now, he announced, his voice tight. Brace for impact. The ship shuddered violently as it plunged into the turbulent region. Alarms blared as reality itself seemed to warp around them. Grath worked furiously at his console, forearms flying across the controls. It's no use, Sarah shouted over the cacophony. The navigational systems are completely scrambled. After the third failed attempt to penetrate deeper into the rift, Grayath's eyes lit up with an idea. Captain, I think I've got it. We need to synchronize our engine output with the gravitational fluctuations. Kevin nodded, sweat beating on his forehead. Do it. As Grath implemented his risky strategy, the ship's vibrations changed from a violent shaking to a more rhythmic pulsing. They inched forward, the rift's swirling energies parting before them. But as they ventured deeper, strange visions began to assault the crew. Kevin saw Earth as it once was, teeming with life and possibility. The image twisted, showing the devastation wrought by the virus. Faces of those lost along the way flashed before his eyes. Friends, family, strangers he couldn't save. Stay focused, he growled, as much to himself as to his crew. It's not real. Hours passed as they navigated the treacherous expanse. Suddenly, Sarah's voice cut through the haze. Captain, I'm picking up something massive on sensors. It's, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. Through the view screen, an enormous structure materialized. It seemed to flicker in and out of existence, its alien architecture defying comprehension. The final cure segment, Kevin breathed. It's in there. We have to go in. They docked with the derelict construct, the boarding party consisting of Kevin, Grayath, and two of their most experienced fighters. As they stepped into the alien corridor, reality shifted around them. Walls became floors. Ceilings transformed into spiraling vortexes. Kevin led the way, his senses on high alert. Shadowy figures darted at the edge of his vision, whispers echoing in his mind. He saw his worst fears given form. Earth consumed by the virus. His crew mutated into monstrosities. Don't let it get to you, he warned his team. The rift is playing tricks on us. They fought their way through nightmarish creatures born from their deepest terrors. Grath grappled with a writhing mass of tentacles while Kevin blasted away at shadows that took the form of those he'd failed to save. After what felt like an eternity, they reached the central chamber. There, pulsing with otherworldly energy, sat the final core data. Kevin reached for it, his heart pounding. A bone-chilling roar shattered the moment of triumph. Kevin spun to see a grotesque figure lumbering towards them, Zarek, twisted beyond recognition by mutation and the rift's chaotic energies. The virus must be purged, Zarek howled, his voice a cacophony of inhuman sounds. The chamber erupted into chaos. Kevin's team fought desperately against Zarek's mutant forces, bolstered by the rift's reality-warping power. In the melee, Kevin found himself separated from the others, face to face with the monstrosity Zarek had become. As they clashed, Kevin realized with growing horror that Zarek represented everything humanity could have become, a plague of uncontrolled mutation and madness. He fought not just for the cure, but for the very soul of his species. Zarek's attacks were relentless, fueled by inhuman strength and rage. Kevin dodged and weaved, his own body pushed to its limits. He searched for a weakness, anything to turn the tide. In a moment of clarity, Kevin saw the fractures in Zarek's psyche, the vulnerability to the rift's chaotic nature. He focused his attacks not on Zarek's mutated form, but on the lingering shreds of his sanity. With a final, risky move, Kevin unleashed a barrage of conflicting sensory inputs, exploiting the rift's reality-bending properties. Zarek howled in confusion and pain, his form twisting in on itself. 
The victory was short-lived. The chamber began to shake violently, the very fabric of space-time unraveling around them. Kevin snatched the cure data and ran, shouting for his team to fall back. They sprinted through collapsing corridors, reality crumbling at their heels. With a final burst of speed, they hurled themselves back onto their ship, disengaging from the disintegrating structure. As they rocketed away from the imploding alien construct, Kevin allowed himself a moment of relief. They had done it. They had all three pieces of the cure. But his elation turned to dread as they emerged from the rift. Before them loomed Sire Father's armada, a wall of Cilaban warships blocking their path. And behind them, trapped in a gravitational dead zone, was the remnant of the human resistance fleet. Kevin's mind raced, weighing impossible choices. Fight through Sire Father's overwhelming forces? Or find a way to get the cure data to safety while he bought time for a miracle? As Claxons blared and his crew looked to him for guidance, Kevin made his decision. Kevin's eyes darted between the tactical displays, his breath catching in his throat. The Suliban Armada surrounded them, a wall of sleek warships blocking any hope of escape. Behind them, the remnants of the human resistance fleet drifted helplessly, caught in the invisible grip of a gravitational dead zone. We're out of options, Sarah said, her voice tight with tension. Kevin's mind raced. Fight or sacrifice, neither choice offered much hope. Then an idea sparked. Marcus, he said, turning to the grizzled elder. I'm transmitting the cure data to you now. Get everyone aboard Grayath's ship and prepare for slipstream. Marcus's eyes widened. What about you? I'll buy you time, Kevin replied, his fingers flying over the console. As Marcus and the others rushed to evacuate, Kevin opened a channel to the Suliban flagship. Sire Father's grotesque visage filled the view screen. Come to beg for mercy, the Suliban ruler sneered. Kevin leaned forward, his voice dripping with contempt. I'm here to show you what real strength looks like. You call us a virus? We're the cure to your disease of tyranny. Sire Father's face contorted with rage. All ships concentrate fire on that vessel. Obliterate them. Kevin's hands gripped the controls as energy blasts lanced towards his ship. He pushed the engines to their limit, corkscrewing through the barrage in a suicide run at the Suliban flagship. Alarms blared as hull plating buckled under the assault. Kevin gritted his teeth, pushing forward. In his peripheral vision, he caught a glimpse of Gryath's ship slipping into slipstream. Now for the encore, Kevin muttered. He cut main power, letting his crippled vessel drift. As the Suliban moved in for the kill, Kevin fired up the auxiliary thrusters, leading them on a frantic chase away from the ambush site. In the relative quiet of the engine room, Kevin worked feverishly to rig the warp core. Sweat dripped from his brow as he rerouted power conduits and overrode safety protocols. The ship shuddered as another volley struck home. Kevin stumbled, steadying himself against a bulkhead. The warp core hummed ominously, ready to unleash its payload of data and destruction. Kevin dragged himself back to the bridge, watching as Sire Father's armada closed in for the final blow. His finger hovered over the ejection control. Not yet, he whispered. Not yet. The Suliban ships loomed larger, weapons primed. Kevin took a deep breath and pressed the button. The warp core erupted from the belly of his ship, detonating in a blinding flash. Space itself seemed to tear as the shockwave expanded, carrying with it the encoded cure data. Kevin's world dissolved into chaos and fire. Klaxons screamed as emergency force fields flickered to life. He felt the lurch as the escape pod tore free, Grath's upgrades giving him one last chance at survival. As consciousness faded, Kevin allowed himself a small smile. He'd done it. He'd given humanity its shot at rebirth. The void of space claimed him, his pod tumbling end over end into the darkness. Unbeknownst to Kevin, a cloaked ship glided silently through the debris field. Tendrils of energy lashed out, ensnaring the human's craft and drawing it into a cavernous hangar bay. Robed figures gathered around the battered escape pod, their flesh rippling beneath their garments. One of them placed a hand on the pod's surface, closing its eyes in concentration. The prophecy speaks true, the Charith matriarch intoned, 
this one carries the key to our ascension. As Kevin drifted in stasis, unaware of his captors, the Charith ship slipped away into the depths of space. Their new prize secured, they began preparations for the rituals that would usher in a new age of mutation and transcendence. Light years away, Marcus hunched over a console aboard Grayath's vessel, his wizened face etched with concern. This can't be right, he muttered, scrolling through the fragmented cure data. Sarah leaned in, her eyes widening as she saw the incomplete sequences. We're missing pieces. Marcus nodded grimly. Kevin's sacrifice bought us a chance, but we're not out of the woods yet. He turned to address the ragtag group of human survivors. Our work isn't done. Kevin's fate, and the fate of our entire species, now rests in the hands of the Charith. We need to find them, and fast. The crew exchanged uneasy glances, knowing the dangers that lay ahead. But with humanity's future hanging in the balance, they had no choice but to. The stasis pod hissed open, cold mist billowing out as Kevin's eyes fluttered. He gasped, lungs burning as he sucked in air tinged with an acrid, alien scent. Disoriented, he pushed himself up, palms pressing against a surface that felt alive. The pod wasn't his escape craft. Kevin found himself in a cavernous chamber, its walls pulsing with an eerie bioluminescence. Tendrils of organic material snaked across the floor, connecting to bizarre devices that defied human engineering. Welcome, Harbinger, a voice rasped, sending chills down Kevin's spine. He spun to face a group of robed figures, their flesh rippled beneath their garments, faces hidden by elaborate masks. The lead figure stepped forward, its mask adorned with swirling patterns that seemed to move of their own accord. I am Zalith, High Matriarch of the Charith, it intoned. Your arrival heralds the next phase of our great becoming. Kevin's mind raced, piecing together fragments of memory. The Sullivan attack, his audacious attempt with the Warp core. Where am I? What have you done with the cure data? Zalith's mask tilted, an unsettling approximation of curiosity. Your data burst was... Intriguing, but incomplete. We seek to unlock its full potential through you. Before Kevin could react, tendrils erupted from the floor, wrapping around his limbs. He struggled, but the organic restraints tightened, pulling him towards a pulsating altar. Begin the merger, Zalith commanded. Pain exploded through Kevin's body as needles pierced his skin. He screamed as alien compounds flooded his system, twisting his DNA. Through the haze of agony, he caught glimpses of fractured realities, the virus consuming worlds, civilizations rising and falling in the blink of an eye. Join us, Salith's voice echoed in his mind. Become one with the overmind. Kevin gritted his teeth, focusing on memories of Earth, of his crew. He wouldn't let them strip away his humanity. As the Charith sought to break him, Kevin's determination hardened. He'd find a way out, regardless of the cost. Days blurred into weeks as Kevin endured the Charith's experiments. In rare moments of lucidity, he studied their technology, piecing together an understanding of their biomechanical systems. During one session, as the matriarchs discussed his progress, Kevin managed to interface with a nearby console. His fingers flew across the alien controls, embedding a coded distress signal into the Charith's subspace communications. Meanwhile, light years away, Marcus hunched over a holographic display, surrounded by a motley crew of human resistance fighters and alien allies. The remnants of Kevin's transmission flickered before them, maddeningly incomplete. We're missing crucial segments, Sarah said, frustration evident in her voice. Without the full sequence, the cure is useless. Marcus nodded grimly. Then we find Kevin. He's out there somewhere and he's our only hope of completing the algorithm. Grayath stepped forward, his forearms clenched in grit. My network of informants spans dozens of systems. We'll turn over every rock in this galaxy if we have to. As they worked, reports trickled in from across human space. Isolated resistance cells, hearing of Kevin's sacrifice, rallied to Marcus's banner. Grayath's pirate fleet struck Sulaban supply lines, 
liberating human prisoners and stockpiling resources. On the bridge of his flagship, Sire Father seethed as another report of human insurgency crossed his desk. How dare these vermin defy us, he snarled, smashing a fist against his command console. His second-in-command hesitated before speaking. My lord, there's more. Our long-range patrols have encountered aberrations, Cherith cultists, twisted beyond recognition. Sire Father's eyes narrowed. The humans seek to unleash a plague upon us all. Redirect the fleet. We crush this rebellion now before they can acquire their weapon. Back in the depths of Cherith space, Kevin lay strapped to an examination table, his body racked with pain from the latest round of enhancements. As the matriarchs filed out, discussing the day's results, a shadow detached itself from the wall. Kevin tensed, ready for another ordeal. Instead, a hooded figure leaned close, speaking in a harsh whisper. You resist the overmind. How? Wary but desperate for any ally, Kevin croaked out a response. I remember who I am, what I'm fighting for. The figure pulled back its hood, revealing a face that was unmistakably Cherith, yet different, more individual. I am Crax, it said, and I believe we can help each other. Over the following weeks, Kevin and Crax formed an unlikely partnership. Crax's fascination with human individuality grew, while Kevin learned the intricacies of Charith biology. Together, they hatched a plan. Under the guise of a routine cleansing, they infiltrated a Cherith birthing chamber. As Crax distracted the attendants, Kevin plunged his hands into the gelatinous pool. The genetic catalysts within reacted violently with the altered DNA in his system, but he pushed through the pain, extracting the key components they needed. Alarms blared as they fled the chamber. Crax turned to Kevin, his eyes filled with a mix of fear and persistence. Go! I'll hold them off! Kevin hesitated, but Crax shoved him towards an access hatch. Remember me, Crax said. Show them the strength of the individual. With a heavy heart, Kevin sealed the hatch behind him, Crax's last stand buying him precious seconds. He raced through twisting corridors, the incomplete cure, and stolen genetic material clutched to his chest. In the hangar bay, he threw himself into a scout craft, praying the modifications he and Crax had made would work. The ship lurched as Kevin engaged the makeshift slipstream drive. He shot into the void, pushing the stolen craft to its limits as he evaded Charith pursuers. For days he ran, staying one step ahead of both Charith and Suliban patrols. Finally on the edge of a desolate mining system, Kevin's sensors picked up a familiar signal. He dropped out of slipstream, relief washing over him as he saw the ragtag fleet of resistance ships. As Kevin's battered craft touched down in a cavernous hangar, he stumbled out, exhausted but triumphant. Marcus rushed forward, steadying him. Kevin, Marcus breathed, disbelief and joy mingling in his voice. You made it. Kevin nodded weakly, holding up the precious vials of genetic material. I've got what we need. The cure, it's within our grasp. Marcus's eyes shone with fierce pride. He turned to the assembled crowd of humans and aliens, raising his voice. Brothers and sisters in arms, behold Kevin the Reborn, bearer of humanity's salvation. A cheer went up, echoing through the hangar. As Kevin looked out at the sea of faces, human, alien, all united in their struggle, he felt the weight of destiny settling on his shoulders. The final battle for Earth, for the very future of humanity, lay ahead. Kevin's revelation galvanized the resistance. Within days, Marcus's call to arms echoed across subspace channels, drawing scattered human cells from their hiding places. Grayath's pirate fleet swelled with ships of all sizes and configurations, a patchwork armada united by a single purpose. On the bridge of their flagship, Kevin stood before a holographic display of Suliban-controlled space. His fingers traced the path of their planned assault, pausing over Earth's familiar shape. We punch through here, he said, voice steady. The regenerative bioweapon will clear our path. Marcus nodded, his weathered face set with purpose. And what of the other races under Suliban control? Kevin's eyes gleamed. We free them all. 
The attack began with surgical precision. Human ships dropped out of slipstream above a Sulaban-occupied mining world. As enemy vessels scrambled to intercept, Kevin activated the bioweapon. A shimmering field enveloped the lead ships. Where it touched Sulaban hulls, metal writhed and reshaped. Crew screamed as their own vessels turned against them, assimilated into the growing human fleet. World after world fell to the Liberation Force. Each victory swelled their ranks with newly freed races, all bearing the scars of Suliban oppression. The Kree, insectoid warriors who had resisted Suliban rule for generations. The Voth, masters of bioengineering whose skills proved invaluable in refining the weapon. Sirefather raged in his command center, smashing displays as reports of defeat poured in. How? he snarled. How are these vermin doing this? His second-in-command cowered. My lord, our outer defensive lines have collapsed. They're pushing towards the core systems. Sire Father's eyes narrowed. Deploy the Envirogeddon weapons. Scorch every world that harbors these insects. But sir, our own people... Do it! Sire Father roared. Across Suliban space, planet-killer missiles rained down on rebellious worlds. Atmosphere ignited. Oceans boiled away. But even as billions perished, the bioweapon's tendrils spread, preserving pockets of life that regrew with terrifying speed. The final confrontation loomed. Both fleets converged on the Sorn homeworld, a planet Sire Father had stripped bare millennia ago. Kevin's flagship led the charge, bioconstructs swarming ahead to engage the Suliban Armada. Space itself seemed to warp as weapons fire saturated the system. Suliban ships found themselves caught in a deadly crossfire as Sorn survivors, long hidden among the human ranks, revealed themselves with righteous fury. Kevin stood on his bridge, eyes closed in concentration as he guided the bioweapons assault. Suliban vessels melted and reformed, their crews absorbed into the ever-growing collective consciousness. Sirefather, Seeing defeat inevitable, played his final card. With a snarl, he activated Sorn's ancient sun harvester. Energy poured from the system's star, building to a cataclysmic release that would obliterate everything. Kevin's eyes snapped open. His hands flew across the bio-interface, redirecting the harvester's power. The beam lanced out, not to destroy, but to create. The barren Sorn homeworld shuddered, Continents reshaped themselves, seas filled with boiling protoplasm. In mere minutes, the planet transformed into a vast, pulsing organism, the ultimate expression of Kevin's vision. From this new nexus, waves of mutating genetic material burst forth. They engulfed planets, moons, and ships alike. The Suliban Armada dissolved, its component atoms repurposed into humanity's new galactic form. Sirefather, his sanity fraying, fled in his last remaining ship. He plunged into the depths of intergalactic space, Kevin's creation chasing close behind. Kevin himself felt his consciousness expanding, merging with the biomass he had unleashed. His awareness stretched across light years, encompassing worlds and civilizations. He witnessed the birth of a new reality, one where life and matter were one and the same. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.